Hello and welcome back to Chaos West TV. Um, the talk will start in just a moment. I will now switch to German for one second to announce the German translation. Then I'll switch back to English and then we get started. Hallo äh, alle zusammen, willkommen zu Chaos West TV. Der nächste Talk ist zwar auf Englisch, wird aber dank unseres wunderbaren Translation Teams auf Deutsch übersetzt. Translation heißt übrigens äh, übersetzen auf Deutsch, nur damit das auch schon noch übersetzt ist. Ähm, er sollte das im Stream auswählen können, denke ich. Und dann könnt ihr diesen Talk auch auf Deutsch genießen. Und ich wechsle damit direkt zurück auf Englisch. All right, we're back. And now, without any further delay, please um, welcome this Farag Unicorn to the virtual stage. Give her a, a warm round of applause in the privacy of your viewing bay. And let's get started with the talk, Union Busting. What is it and why should you care? Hello and welcome to my talk on the topic of union busting, what it is and why you should care. Firstly, let's talk a bit about content notices. Um, during this talk I will be mentioning police brutality, uh, workplace inequality, which is often caused by structural forms of discrimination, um, as well as the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, just so you know, and you can make an informed decision on whether you want to keep watching. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I've kind of structured this talk into two main parts. The first being why you should care, even though it's the second part of the sentence, um, where I'm going to explain a bit about what unions could do for you, because <coughs> I think it's fair to assume that a large amount of people watching this talk will probably be tech workers who um, are not unionized, who don't really know why they should be unionized, because um, many of us actually have pretty good workplaces, so we don't really feel the need for a, for a union. Um, and then I want to talk about just the union busting part, what is being done, um, and what can be done against union busting. So yeah, um, at first, what's the current situation? Union membership has been in decline for decades. Um, unions seem kind of antiquated, old school and why well, that's not really true they aren't antiquated or old school they just aren't as, as popular as they used to be this is caused by a number of factors like uh, new industries that never did have unions like programming um, there never was some general programming union at least not in germany um, and uh, so Many people working in these new uh, industries just never had any contact to unions and don't really know what they are or why they would need them. <laughs> More people are in precarious and or pseudo self employment. Um, those are situations in which many people don't really know that they could benefit from a union, and that's intentional on part of the employers. Um, People just aren't as connected to their workspace as they used to be. People used to work at the same place for like multiple decades. If you're job hopping and just staying at the same place for one or two years, you're much less likely to actually want to change things there because yeah, you're not gonna be there to, to reap these changes. And there's also uh, less of a sense of solidarity between workers. We've got the somewhat new separation between blue and white collar jobs. Um, where people think they are not like those of the, the other um, other group, uh, while there's actually more things that um, more things that are similar for us than things that are different. So there should be more solidarity between workers, and uh, there isn't as much as there used to be. Um, but one of the few things that were um, giving people hope during the uh, pandemic was that 2020 saw the first increase in union membership and for a long time. So I looked a bit around uh, for numbers um, to back up this claim and every, every single country for which I had numbers saw an increase. So for the first time in a very long time, like first time in at least 20 years. Um, Those sadly didn't, uh, this increase sadly didn't necessarily have a positive reason because um, many employers just showed 
how little they cared about their employees' well-being, not providing PPE, making them come in when it really wasn't necessary, um, and a general disregard for their health and safety. So people went, went to fight back against that. Also, if so many people are suddenly dying without much of a warning, people tend to think more about mortality and their own mortality. And if you think about your own mortality, you're less likely to be willing to spend your life um, working minimum wage or not much above that uh, for someone who doesn't care about you. And also, we just realized that we have to stick together to survive. So, Sure, there was this uh, loud minority of people who were refusing to care about others, but most people did stay at home, most people reduced social contacts, most people are wearing uh, masks whenever they're near others, so we're sticking together to make it through this uh, pandemic, and a union is a way in which workers stick together, so that could be a reason why some people went back to that idea of unionization. Um, sadly, we also saw that this increase is actively being fought by many employers. Um, but yeah, that's more of a part two topic. So yeah, first of all, why do we even need unions as employees? The most important reason, in my opinion, is, is definitely solidarity. Like, even if you've got a job which you really like and where You've got enough uh, personal time off uh, or you just got the things you need to be able to work productively and to enjoy your work. You can still help other people who don't, who aren't in this nice position to get into a better one. Um, workplace competitiveness is a thing that's been kind of flaring up. Everyone wants to be the best to, to get those... Um, get a better wage or whatever. And um, I really don't like workplace competitiveness. If, if people are working together to improve the situation at their workplace, uh, instead of working against each other to look better in front of the boss, that's better for everyone. Um, having those uh, without the means to speak up have their voices heard. So imagine you're being a, uh, your senior employer uh, employee and um, you're just happy where you work but you're realizing that trainees just aren't treated as well. And the trainees can't really say anything about that because they're seen as replaceable. So when they speak up, they, they won't be, they won't get what they demand. But um, if you speak up for them, there's a much higher chance that they will be heard. And you're also more likely to know about what troubles them if you're in the union, if you're talking with them about their workplace, about what troubles them, all that stuff. Um, standing together with others makes you feel less alone. It's important uh, to to be not to not feel like you're alone, and like uh, especially in the case of workplace competitiveness, you can often feel very isolated at work. And another thing. Um, we in tech uh, do have a lot of uh, privileges that our people in other industries don't have, and we could help people out in other industries by changing what is considered normal. Um, first thing is uh, we've got the 40-hour work week, which was actually a huge success by unions to get us to this place, because before we had that, uh, people were working even more. So the, the unions thought, okay, it, it would be fair to, to have eight hours of work, eight hours of sleep, and eight hours of personal time. Well, that isn't true if you, uh, you've got a commute to do. Um, that probably wasn't as much of an issue back then. Um, but these days, the 40-hour work week just isn't, isn't the, the way to go anymore. Because we've seen a shift to jobs where you've got to be concentrated and creative all the time, in many cases. And polls have shown that people just aren't capable of being, of concentrating, of being creative for eight hours at a time, or just sitting in, uh, still in a chair at their computer, maybe 45 minute lunch break or whatever, but that's not enough. So uh, people are actually only working around three hours a day according to polls, and the rest are sitting 
at their workstation, not working, not doing what they want to be, simply because that's the normal and because they have to work that amount of hours to to make a living and to pay for their rent and whatever. I actually switched to a 28-hour work week this year and I've realized I'm being more productive than ever. So I've got four days a week of work and only seven hours a day and I'm spending more of the time being productive. So my employer is getting more from my time and I'm getting more time for myself. So it's better for everyone. But it's not normal and it should be normal. Time-based payment also doesn't make sense in many cases and for many workers. But the thing is, if you go away from time-based payment, uh, payment, you're very likely to get underpaid. So uh, if you've got a union helping you uh, work out your contract and all that stuff, um, it's much more likely that you could get a non-time-based uh, contract where that's legally possible that is still fair for you. Another thing that I think is kind of a scandal is that uh, personal time off, sick days and parental leave are just not legally regulated in many places. And just like the 40-hour work week, which was a victory of unions that got made into law, unions could fight together to um, make those things mandatory for everyone um, so that everyone can go on vacation. Everyone, People don't go to work sick. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, we've had employers who forced their people to go to work sick. And obviously that made the pandemic much worse. Um, and parental leave, that should just be something that everyone gets who gets a child, but it's not regulated, so many people don't. Um, another thing is, it's not normal that yearly wage increases uh, are contractual and match inflation. If your wage does not increase with inflation, you're basically being paid less because you are not able to pay for as much things, especially with uh, the, the rent increases, which are often even more than inflation. Um, you're just not going to be able to keep your standard of living without, without switching jobs to find something which is better paid. If you've had a contract with yearly wage increases that match inflation, that would be great. And that should be at the default for everyone. And working from home should just be allowed wherever possible, not just during a pandemic, because why is it normal that we spend two hours or even more of our day just getting to and from work? We're not being paid for that time. We can't do what we want during that time. And if that's not necessary, we shouldn't be, uh, be forced to do it. Also, just for accessibility reasons, many people may not be able to get to the office, may not be able to use public transit or whatever. So working from home should be just allowed wherever possible. And in the best case, unions could work to make that into law. Um, some more quick points. It's uh, fighting workplace inequality. If there's um, like named wage groups, uh, it's much more likely that people are able to speak about their wages. And if you know how much your co-workers are making, you also know if they're being paid significantly more than you are. And a union could, could definitely help with that. Um, also, if you work together and if you're one united voice, you can much better speak up against impossible deadlines and crunch. And those are things that are... Um, very common even in the tech industry, especially in uh, game development, which is kind of an industry built upon crunch, and that has to change. Um, improving the treatment of trainees, just um, like I already mentioned, if the more senior employees uh, speak up for trainees, uh, things can be better for them. Um, and another very important thing is that a union can help protect your contract. Um, in Germany, we've got works councils, which aren't really unions, but kind of fall into the category of unionization, um, which get a say in which employees are being terminated. So they can stop the termination or at least fight it very, very effectively. Um, and a union will be able to help their members uh, with legal procedures to sue against uh, an illegal termination of a contract. 
um, which is really good to know you have that because uh, many people just aren't able to fight an illegal termination of the contract so their employers can just terminate them whenever they want. And just the endless job hopping that many people are doing because their wages don't keep up with industry standards or inflation, um, that's not good for anyone because the first couple of weeks, days, months, whatever, uh, where you're not working productively but just learning, those are stressful. And those having those as, as often as many people do, it's just not good for mental health. And it's not good for the companies you work for because they constantly have to train new people. Um, so yeah, endless job hopping really is a thing that I think shouldn't be as normal. And if we were to unionize, maybe we could make it less normal. What upsides do unions have for employers? Because actually, if an employer embraces a union, um, they can get upsides too. So. It's not just fighting against the employer or anything. Keeping talent in a company is easier. Just as I said, uh, job hopping will be um, less common, less necessary. Um, unionized workers, especially those who have uh, fought for unionization, will feel more connected to their workplace because yeah, they work to work, just making it better. So they obviously want to stay there to reap the benefits of that. And uh, unionized workers are also more likely to try and improve things uh, instead of searching for a new job. So, because they've got the tools to do so and um, they might feel more empowered to do it. Finding new talent is also easier. People who are happy with their jobs will recommend their friends to apply. Um, and just knowing that a company has a union contract would at least for me be a big pro if I were deciding between offers. Uh, another, like maybe a bit more minor thing, is that working together to improve the workplace is a form of uni uh, team building. So your workers will probably get to know each other, will will start liking each other more, and be able to work together better, not just for unionization but also for accomplishing their tasks. And also a very minor thing because you're gonna spend time. Uh, and negotiating with unions, obviously, but you're not going to spend that all that much time uh, on individual wage negotiations, which might also be a benefit. <laughs> but this talk isn't called why you should yet join a union, um, so let's switch to the main thing I want to talk about, which is union busting. Um, I've kind of split the different tools or strategies um, up into three categories. We've got the governmental union busting, the commercialized and the union busting strategies that employers themselves apply. Um, so let's start with the government. One common thing is that strikes are being banned. Uh, this ranges from banning strikes of any kind to uh, banning just general solidarity strikes or making legal strikes extremely difficult by banning wildcat strikes or banning strikes for government employees, which is also something that um, to some extent happens in Germany. Um, the legality of strikes uh, being difficult um, is something that is pretty normal or just general strikes not being allowed, um, which we kind of think that, yeah, that's just the way things are, but they shouldn't probably be that way. Um, another thing is police brutality against workers on strike. Historically, that was even uh, they even got help uh, from the military. These days, the police are so militarized that they do not need the military anymore to um, be down protesters. But yeah, police brutality is a tool very commonly used to uh, fight workers' movements. Refuse to do anything about illegal union busting practices because they simply don't care. And another thing that you might not think of as union busting, but it also is because um, the in inadequate social systems make losing your job a lot more scary and stressful. So um, you're less likely to speak up against unfair practices of your employer if, if that could mean losing your job. And uh, unemployment systems uh, 
I'm a commonplace uh, um, not being built to uh, help you get back on your feet or anything, but they are built to make you fear you're losing your job. They don't respect the people who uh, need them. Um, there's extreme amounts of unnecessary unnesessary paper work you've got to fill out, um, appointments you've got to attend to, um, and also often you can use, uh, lose your benefits when you don't accept a job offer. And many job offers just are bad. You should not accept them because you won't be treated fairly if you did. But you have to accept, accept them because otherwise you might not make rent. Um, school and medical systems that are built to leave people in debt because unemployment will almost never cover paying off debt in, in addition to paying off your cost of living, which they often don't cover fully. And also too little availability of affordable living space. People might want to fight me on that because um, they don't think that's the government's job. I think it is. Um, I think the government should be providing living space to everyone who needs it. And they don't. Instead, they throw people out of uh, squatted buildings and uh, all that stuff. So, yeah. Commercialized union busting. There is a whole industry providing consulting regarding actions that can be taken against unionization. They also provide propaganda films and mandatory educational meetings um, to reduce motivation to unionize. Some may even spy on unions and employees who may be, may be planning unionization, um, or they might even place people inside those uh, union meetings to, um, to get them to start infighting. And there's also private security, militias and gangs who intimidate and beat up workers who want to unionize it, or who are currently on strike. Then the uh, union busting strategies. One thing people might not think of as union busting is the very common statement of we're all a big family here. So this is all just a family and we really like each other. And that basically boils down to emotional manipulations to make workers feel bad for going against their employer. They're using social group dynamics to destabilize relationships, especially with people who might want to improve things, who might fight against their employers so they are traitors against this family. Um, which is something that, that might sound good on the on the in its beginning, but it it really is kind of a red flag if a company calls itself family. I once worked at a company with like six hundred people and everyone in management was like we're all a big family here. Well very dysfunctional family at that, but maybe they were a family. Um, whatever. So uh, the unequal treatment of workers is another thing that's being used. Giving certain workers more privilege, privileges than others without a clear obvious reason why. It destabilizes relationships because of uh, envy um, and it increases competitiveness because everyone wants to be on that better treat, uh, in the place where they're being treated better. So. That's the thing many humans uh, sadly tend to do. It's uh, when, when met with an unequal, unfair system, instead of wanting to end the system, they want to end up on the place where they're winning, kind of. And yeah, that's really dangerous for unionization. There's also impeding communication between workers, especially during working from home. They can ban group chats that don't have at least one member of management in them. Even if it's just developers talking about technical um, issues or whatever they're working on, as, uh, as soon as there's not a management person in there, they're going to be very, very sad that you started just chat and they're going to gonna close it down. Um, uh, if you're not working from home, there may be large office rooms where you just cannot have a private conversation without, um, yeah, a private conversation where you're not being overheard by a member of management. Um, there's also the hiring decisions through the self-employment because if you're self-employed, you often really don't have access to uh, many union perks. Time contracts that they can just end, um, or well, they can't end it uh, whenever they want, but they can not extended or they can um, 
make people scared that they won't extend it. And also another thing that's uh, luckily illegal in many places is at will employment. That's where both the employer and employee can terminate the um, relationship at any point without any reason. So I used to think those scenes in American movies or TV shows where, where someone's like, you're fired, and they uh, have to start packing up their things immediately uh, where weren't realistic, but they actually are if those people are in at-will employment. Generally, you really don't want to end up in this kind of employment. Another thing they often do is undermining works councils and union officials. Getting people elected who don't actually want things to change, um, maybe even getting loyalists uh, into the works council that will lie to the other employees about things management is doing or that one step in one management is doing bad things um, also you've got uh, treating council members better than others to maybe hide uh, how badly workers are being treated um, and maybe even bribery which does happen um, then we've got the the really dangerous things, um, which is first bullying employees into quitting with, with um, a large amount of tools they've got for that, like workload increases, even more impossible deadlines, unfair performance reviews. If you've got uh, different shifts, maybe union uh, organize, organizers are going to get the worst shifts that are that they are overgoing them in promotions. Um, excluding organizers from company events to make them feel like they're not part of the whole um, and in some case even open harassment and slurs. Then we've got uh, contract terminations if the bullying them into quitting on their own doesn't work. Um, it's illegal in many places to fire people for organizing, however other reasons can be made up. Often those reasons are actually things that uh, are created uh, during the bullying attempts like bad performance or whatever. And once again, not extending time contracts of anyone who might be thinking of unionization. So what can you do against that? I think um, before openly addressing any plans to organize the workspace, you should talk uh, privately with colleagues you trust. And when discussing unionization, you do not want to use um, your company email, Slack, or similar unencrypted messengers. You should use private messaging methods that are secure. Um, also join a union on your own before trying to organize the whole workspace. Union membership is useful, even if you're not uh, getting a union contract. And they can also provide you with info materials and uh, file unjust termination of your contract. Getting the public on your side, especially if you've already got a couple of colleagues helping you out, um, is also really useful. Public pressure can do wonders and there's also the possibility of crowdfunded strike funds. Um, so if you're going on strike to um, get unionized, you're definitely going to need money so you can keep on paying the bills and everything. And uh, if you don't have a union backing your strike, strike fund yet, uh, crowdfunding can help a lot. Also, join a union if you're not planning on organizing your workspace. I'm a union member even though I don't have a union contract and I probably never will have one. But um, my union dues go towards uh, strike funds for people who need them more than I do. So it's just a thing of solidarity and of helping uh, others against uh, union busting, even if I'm not directly impacted. And another thing is just to not give up, even though um, it might feel hopeless and things might seem really bad. Um, yeah. So I've got some more closing remarks. Uh, first of all, if you're planning on joining a union, um, there is no craft union for tech workers in Germany, but I want to encourage you to consider looking further than just the big industry unions that you might already know the names of. There are small anarchist syndicalist unions that might be able to better match what you want of your union and that might also just be more sympathetic to you personally. So look a bit further than those huge unions. 
Another thing, uh, I'm generally not a fan of those um, more of a comment questions during QA, but um, if it's safe for you to do so, I'd be very interested in hearing from you during the QA period, which uh, we're going to start uh, soon. And also, just if you were wondering why I didn't name the companies that uh, were actively doing union busting this year, which is something I was considering, but um, I've already was threatened with one slap suit um, this year, so to make me shut up about something uh, I said about a company, and I would really like to leave it at that. So I'm not going to name any companies, but if you look at union websites, if you go on social media and look at like unionization hashtags, you're going to be able to find those um, names of the companies very easily. So yes, uh, thank you for your time, and I think we've got about 10 minutes left for QA, so yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, now uh, it's time for the Q&A. You, un you can ask questions on Twitter under the hashtag RC3CWTV. The hashtag should be visible somewhere around here. The same hashtag should be on the Fediverse also. And you can also ask questions on the in the IRC at HackInt in the channel RC3-CWTV, just to keep it a bit more varied. And now I think we will we will wait a few seconds and as far as Unicorn wants to add something to the talk in the meantime. Yes. Um, one thing that I wasn't able to add to the uh, last slide because this talk was pre-recorded a week ago um, is that I've been contacted by the Tech Workers Coalition who um, saw that I am going to hold this talk and they uh, asked if I could say a bit about them. Um, they are not a union and themselves, but uh, instead they are a group of people who will help um, others who want to unionize and uh, support them in doing so, or unionization, uh, starting workers' councils. Um, they've got groups all over the world. Um, I was uh, contacted by the Berlin group, which you can find at techworkersberlin.com. And if you're not in Berlin, you can find the main group at techworkerscoalition.org. So they seem to be supporting basically the same uh, things that I was talking about here. So, yes. All right, thank you. It seems like a few questions are trickling in, so we can start. Um, the first question may be from the other side, actually. So from the perspective of a founder, how can I support my employees to organize or join a union? That's a really interesting question um, because it's somewhat rare that founders want uh, their employees to start a union, but in general, it's just important to create an atmosphere where you think that you can speak openly with everyone and where people won't have to fear for their jobs if they do that. You could also maybe contact a union and uh, ask if they want to uh, work out a contract with you. I don't know how many unions would actually do that when it's not actually started by the employees, but yes. Or you could just talk about this during a meeting or whatever and just say, this is a possibility for you, you could do this. Yes. I promise to not destroy your lives if you try. <laughs> yes. Um, so another question, what does joining a union offer over having legal expense insurance? So well, a rather cynical question, I would say. <laughs> Well, an insurance uh, is probably a good idea as well, but uh, a union is not just for yourself, you're also helping others. And also, a legal insurance, they probably are, are not very keen on actually paying your expenses, so they might try to find a way why the, uh, they don't apply or whatever, which, so, so maybe they they won't actually pay and a union is there for you and for other workers so yes they exist to pay not to make money they exist to help not to make money for themselves okay uh, the next question i'm not entirely sure if i understand but i will try my best um, what is the benefit of joining a union if there is no actual outreach of the union in the workplace such as the non-existence of the workers council 
I assume this is about starting or joining a union if your workplace doesn't even have a workers' council. I, I think that's maybe the question. Um, yeah, so a union can help you set up a workers' council, but like I kind of wanted to uh, emphasize the whole uh, solidarity aspect of uh, of unionization because even if even if you're happy without a workers' council and you don't think that your colleagues want one, um, being in a union will still help other people uh, who who actually need uh, the support and. Also, as I said during the talk, uh, if you get fired for some reason, the union can help you fight that. And it's also a social group that maybe uh, attending could be interesting for you, like, you know, social way. All right. Um, are there any recent success stories of tech workers unionizing in Germany or in the EU that are instructive? Um, there's been a lot of sad stories uh, or, or stories of union busting, uh, which was effective uh, recently, sadly. Um, but one thing was the uh, that was where a lot of people were fired, but actually those firings were not uh, were not legal according to um, the court. Uh, was the gorillas. Uh, like this delivery service, get your groceries in 15 minutes or whatever, um, who, who fired a lot of their unionizing workers and uh, they were ordered to undo that. Uh, and also with Lieferando, I think we've seen some uh, successes in unionization recently. Do you know what the current status of the guerrillas union? I remember there was a lot of activity like a few weeks ago, but I haven't checked in in a while. Um, I don't know what the exact state right now is. Uh, I know that they basically can't find new employees who uh, want to work for them, especially now that they have fired a lot of people. And uh, I, um, I'm not sure which delivery service it is, but one delivery service in Berlin did actually get a works council uh, at the end of last month. So I don't think it was Gorillas because, uh, yeah, I should have written that down, sorry. Well, if someone knows, uh, you can write it in the Q&A and I'll read it out. <laughs> All right, I think for now we're out of questions, but I'll wait a, wait a little bit more. Um, I remember that Kickstarter had a unionization drive, right? Did that work out? I think it did, right? Yes, that was uh, successful. They tried to find it, but uh, in the end, the union was successful and does exist. All right, very good. It was gorillas, apparently, says ah, the, nice. the chat. All right, everybody, this is your last chance for questions that will be answered immediately. Or if you want to uh, say anything, now is a good time. Oh yeah, I have a question actually. Have you, do you know about anyone trying to unionize in the sciences and the universities and things like this? Like I'm a, I'm a PhD student, right? And I mean, our general working situation and employment situation is always a bit tenuous and most of the mechanisms for worker representation are very built around people having long-term contracts and stuff like this and not depending on their employer writing them a good reference letter in the end. So have you heard about anything in that direction? Um, not directly. Uh, one thing that I did read about was uh, a university that mistreated some worker. Or I think they fired them and the union did actually help them get the job back. So uh, while there's not a union contract or anything, because those things are really difficult to get for short-term short employment, um, you can still get help from a union uh, to improve or at least get saved if, uh, if you're fired for a bad reason or something. So I certainly don't know if there's any, any union drives. Uh, and another thing in, in science is that many people uh, here in Germany are uh, 
employed directly by the government and uh, fair beamted and they don't they're not allowed to strike so that's not very great for for them although they arguably already have pretty great uh, conditions yeah. yeah i think if you make it to that point you're probably already quite quite good i would say yeah you probably even be able to retire at some point imagine uh okay i think so one person is thanking you for the talk which is nice but it's not a question uh all right i think uh, we can wrap it up then thank you for your talk and for answering the questions um, where can people find you if they want to talk further maybe somewhere in the rc3 world or something or um, any social media or something like that uh, social media, I'm on Mastodon uh, with uh, multiple accounts. The English speaking one is uh, at dysphoric unicorn at uh, cyber uh, dot space. The German speaking one is uh, dysphoric unicorn at chaos dot social. Uh, and I'm also on Twitter at uh, dysphoric dev. And my blog is dysphoric dot dev. So. Nice. Cyberspace is a very good instance, I would say. All right, everybody. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Enjoy the remote chaos experience, and uh, remember to sleep at some point if you want to. Bye bye.